This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. Photos have emerged of a young Tasmanian girl with autism made to spend time in a box at the edge of her classroom. The case brings into question the treatment of students with a disability, with advocates saying it's a symptom of chronic underfunding. This is a box a student with autism was made to sit in when she needed a sensory break. Today, advocates labelled it unacceptable, but say similar complaints are widespread across our public schools. The reality is even now she's still being pulled out of the classroom three or four times a week for a number of hours. She's not getting an education that she deserved. The Grade 2 student attends a Northern Tasmanian school and has been suspended three times. Complaints were first made late last year. Clearly that is not acceptable, uh, Madam Speaker, in any way, shape or form. Not acceptable. The needs are reasonably complex, we're certainly not going to shy away from that, but they're not so complex that they can't be dealt with with reasonable, appropriate adjustments. If we can't support her now, if we can't keep her engaged uh, in year two, um, then we're not giving her the pathway that she not only deserves, but is absolutely entitled to. The Education Department says it continues to work closely with the family and extra assistance, including an additional teacher's aid, was made available to better assist the school. In 2014, the government established a ministerial task force to improve support for students. But those in the sector say teachers have been left with little resources or training to help those with complex needs. It shows just how far we have to go around a truly inclusive education system. This is about resourcing, making sure that every child in Tasmania, no matter what their ability, uh, has the right teaching staff, the right skilled staff and supports there in the school environment. For now, advocates say they just want children with a disability to have the same opportunities as anyone else. Michelle Wisby, Southern Cross News. Flights axed by Regional Express to King Island will resume next month after the council backed down on plans to hike up its airport fees. The deal, brokered by the Tasmanian government, follows months of insults between the airline and council. Our reporter Sean McComish has more. In July this year, Regional Express Airlines slashed 30% of its King Island services, angry over moves by the council to increase its airport fees. The fight had been brewing between both sides in a sensational series of outbursts, with the council accusing the airline of corporate bullying and holding a gun to the head of the remote island community. Days later, Rex fired back, labelling the council statement as full of lies, deceit, xenophobic and defamatory remarks. The airline said it couldn't afford the fee hike and often operated flights to the island at a financial loss. Last week, Mayor Duncan McPhee issued a dramatic apology to the company and today both were on the same page, with the council backing down. Rex announcing flights cut from Melbourne will recommence next month. The deal was brokered by the state government and Tourism Tasmania. Yeah, we welcome uh, this announcement uh, that the uh, dispute is resolved, uh, that uh, flights can uh, be assured in and out of the island. However, the council is only promising to keep the airport fees as they are until April next year. What happens after that is unknown. Authorities are investigating a deliberately lit fire which tore through a vacant home in Clarendon Vale overnight. Tasmania police say the tenants had recently moved out of the Bradman Street property. The fire caused approximately $120,000 damage. Anyone with information regarding the blaze is urged to contact Crime Stoppers. A proposal for an 82-room hotel and restaurant on Rosney Hill has been scrapped, with the proponents announcing they'll go back to the drawing board. Hunter Developments says it will review the project and resubmit an application which adheres to the National Parks and Reserve Act. The proposal has been the subject of significant community backlash, with concerns raised about the scope and size of the development and its impact on the environment. 
The debate over the Tasmanian gun laws has reached the Supreme Court following the state government's decision not to release correspondence about proposed changes. Gun Control Australia lawyers say the public should know why the decision was made to amend the laws prior to the election. While the proposal has now been scrapped, the government has previously said it is not in the public interest to release the original advice. The government has released draft laws to better protect and manage Tasmanian cemeteries following significant public concern. The new legislation comes in response to the Anglican Church's plan to sell properties containing cemeteries to fund its contribution to the redress scheme. The government plans to lengthen the amount of time between a cemetery's last burial and when it can be closed from 30 to 100 years and for stricter management regulations. We've also included in there uh, the right to issue infringement notices on cemetery uh, managers uh, that may breach some of these provisions as well. So it's strengthening uh, the whole management process. There is con significant concern in the community around the very short-term nature of protection of, um, of burial rights and, and sites. And I think we do need to have a far better process so that people understand those entitlements. Community consultation ends on October 14. An inquiry into the future management of Tasmanian irrigation has been handed down after concerns were raised by the farming sector. The inquiry's findings were broadly complementary of the company's schemes, but it recommended Tasmania Tasmanian Irrigation improve communication with its users and create better pathways for the future rollout of services. We have to make sure that the management of irrigation waters uh, right across the state is done in a, in a really professional and certainly sustainable manner and that's what the committee found. Farmers, government departments and the TFGA all provided evidence to the inquiry. The role of community houses in Tasmania has captured the attention of the head of World Vision. Tim Costello says the homes are a vital source of support for the lonely at a conference attended by hundreds of volunteers. It's neighbourhood houses such as this one which provide social support and help Tasmanians connect. They might come in for uh, an education program. Those houses were represented in Hobart today with volunteers who run them day to day taking part in an annual conference. They're sharing ideas about what works in their community to build a stronger community, what helps their community. A lot of the volunteers uh, that come back have been to the centre and some some sort of area at some time and have come back to volunteer. Keynote speaker Tim Costello has worked with some of the world's most vulnerable through World Vision. He says the human connection provided by the houses is vital to combat the scourge of loneliness. Activities really are the entrance doorway into being able to feel my life has meaning. I, I, I am accepted, so that's what they do. In times of need, you've got that support around you. Many homes are at the coalface of community issues. What we deal with are the canaries in the coal mine in, in any community because anyone can walk through the door of the neighbourhood house who's dealing with whatever life's thrown at them. The only question humans want answered is, do I matter? And when people give their time to listen, you get your question answered. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Tasmanian primary school students from 16 different choirs are singing their hearts out as one. The annual Singfest event has been running for a decade and encourages performance to unite rather than compete. It really builds on their self-confidence is one thing. It allows them to mingle with kids from all different parts of the world that come to Launceston to sing. Um, so it just allows them to mix together in their community. The 600-strong choir will perform at Launceston's Albert Hall tonight and tomorrow night. A Tasmanian charity is helping to make school leavers' dreams a reality by providing formal wear to lend students for their big day. The concept started with one idea from a Hobart woman who now has a tribe of fairy godmothers by her side. 
a trio of dream makers. This is the force behind fairy godmother's formal wear, ready to deck out school leavers in special threads for their big day. It's a, a memory that you have for life um, and you know you want to feel special, you want to feel beautiful and you want to feel included. The organisation helping students celebrate the end of their school chapter in a way that may not have otherwise been possible. My own experience like going to high school there were so many girls that said I'm not going, I can't afford a dress, there's no way I'm going to wear something that's not as stunning as everyone else and that's just such a horrible... Brooke Emery founded the organisation to help students create happy memories. People can connect with the organisation online and visit the Fairy Godmothers to find their perfect fit. We have had our first requests come through from a lady that has a little girl in grade six who contacted us to request um, that her daughter feel beautiful on her special days. They've been inundated with donations. Everything from dresses, accessories, shoes and suits ready to be lent out for someone's special day. Um, I've got school age children as well so it's I know that it can be such a burden on parents and it's just going to help so much. But they're happy to take more to make sure everyone can live their own fairy tale. If we can help them then that's all that matters. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The expected US interest rate hike has weighed on local banking shares, offsetting gains from energy and material stocks, holding the Australian share market flat. The ASX 200 index has risen by 6.4 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 72.64 US cents and 81.94 Japanese yen. To cricket and the Tasmanian Tigers skipper George Bailey says last night's batting collapse did little to shake the side's confidence despite the New South Wales attack tearing through the Tigers' order and denying them a third win on the trot. After setting themselves up nicely, thanks to a solid performance for the ball and in the field, the early wicket of Matthew Wade was an omen of things to come. It was a nice wicket. I thought New South Wales um, stuck to their guns, bowled really well. They had to be aggressive with the way they bowled and their lines, and they were. Um, but, yeah, disappointing night with the bat. Batting at seven, Clive Rose was the best of the lot with 35 after a top order crumble. We made it very difficult and, um, and, and really no one. Clive and Jackson looked pretty good out there at the end, which is one of those frustrating things when your tail enders are looking as good as they are. Uh, it's pretty frustrating as batsmen when you're all sitting there watching. But following impressive wins in their previous two matches, Bailey is chalking up yesterday's display with a bat as a one-off for the tournament as they prepare to take on South Australia in Sydney tomorrow. Not a bad result, these first few practice games really, so once the, the proper stuff starts next week then we'll be right to go. Our women cricketers are ready to usher in an exciting new era for the game at North Sydney Oval on Saturday night. The Aussies take on New Zealand in a T20 international during prime time after the AFL Grand Final and our news. Hopefully the Channel 7 will still be on all the TV screens at every single pub around the country and um, they can tune in and watch us go about our business. So it's, um, it's, it's exciting. The players say showcasing their talent in front of a wider audience can only help the growth of women's cricket. The state's top trampoline gymnasts have triumphed against the country's best at a national carnival, with several managing to secure a spot in the World Championship team for Russia. The athletes have just under four weeks to perfect their routines before heading to St Petersburg. Off the back of last week's success on the Gold Coast, these athletes are still flying high. 25-year-old Damien Axelson achieving the highest score in his qualifying event. But he had to kiss goodbye a medal at the National Carnival after falling in the final round. I was hoping to uh, trial some bigger routines in the finals and didn't quite go to plan, but I mean, sometimes that's the reality of sport and... and I wasn't really that disappointed given the result in the preliminary round. Despite the setback, the score still secured him a place in the Australian side, which will head to St Petersburg for the World Championships next month. I was hoping to uh, trial some bigger routines in the finals and didn't quite go to plan, but I mean, sometimes that's the reality of sport and, and I wasn't really that disappointed given the result in the preliminary round. 16-year-old Patrick Schluter also landed himself a spot in the Australian squad, along with Amber French who just managed to snag a gold in the junior women's trampoline final. 
after my finals routine, thought I did a pretty good job and then saw the results. I won by 0.2 and I was really happy. Gymnasts from four Tasmanian clubs gave the 2018 carnival a crack. In general, Tassie was very well represented and, and good quality for, for such a small state. Sites are now firmly set on global success. Yeah, I'm nervous like to go all that way just to compete, but yeah, really excited. Jessie Gilmore, Southern Cross News. She's overcome her share of challenges in the predominantly male world of motocross, establishing herself as one of the country's best young riders. And now Holly Jeeves is ready to shift things up another gear at the upcoming national titles. With no female motocross categories in Tasmania, Holly Jeeves grew up racing against the boys. Yeah, it was good. The boys definitely didn't like it when they got beaten by girls, so that was always pretty fun. Dad Rick sensed the spark when she was just eight. The first lap she did, she came back in, she said, oh, Dad, I don't know whether this is for me, but the second lap out, she just, you couldn't take the smile off her face, and you just knew then that she was, she was hooked. A third place finish at last year's national titles was followed up by an injury interrupted 2018. In February, I broke my ankle riding the bike, so that was a three month setback there. Come off and she said that, you know, it was a bit sore and she went out and rode again and we found out later on that she'd just ridden two full races with a broken ankle. Now back at full pace, Holly is upping the ante ahead of next week's Australian Championships in Penguin. Best I've seen a ride, I mean there are some really good riders coming over from the mainland and she's going to have a work cut out for her, but I mean she won't leave anything in the bag, that's for sure. And while a place on the podium would prove just reward for years of hard work, Holly hopes the exposure of the event encourages any aspiring young female riders to begin blazing their own trail in the sport. I really like going fast and I really enjoy just doing something different to everyone else. Jumps as well? Yeah, the jump's pretty cool. <laughs> Impressive young woman, Joe. She certainly wasn't holding back on the track today, that's she for sure. Was, and I was holding my breath just watching <laughs> her. Good grief. Thank you very much for that, Tom. Good evening. Cool conditions overnight, followed by a fine day across Tasmania. Hobart and Burnie 14 today, Launceston 16 and Devonport 13 degrees. Bushy Park on 17 and Lyre Weenie on minus 4 were the two extremes as temperatures sat just below average. Friendly beaches and King Island 15, Flinders Island, Low Heads and Helens and Strawn 14 degrees. Lyre Weenie just managed double figures. A little stratocumulus cloud over the north and east of the state today and apart from a few other smatterings it was mostly clear. Onshore flows brought cloud to southeast Queensland and eastern Victoria. An upper trough brought showers over New South Wales and southern Queensland as well. A cold front has cloud moving over the bite, extending to Western Australia. Tomorrow, a surface trough and cold front approach Tasmania and should cross during the day. A high pushes in after the front. Surface troughs still sit over the continent. Wind starting out northwest to northeast, reaching 30 knots over the west and south. They should tend west to northwestly tomorrow afternoon. Fairly strong winds has a warning current from from Tasman Island to Stanley, a small craft wind alert for the lakes. And for Hobart tomorrow, a partly cloudy 21, warming up. Nice 20 for Signet, bit of cloud about for New Norfolk, but fine and 21 degrees. Launceston, partly cloudy, 18 the high, 16 for Devonport and Campbelltown with a similar forecast. Burnie tomorrow, partly cloudy and 16, 18 the top for Strawn with showers developing. A shower or two also for Smithton, 17 the maximum. And for St Helens, cloud clearing, 18 the top, up to 20 for Swansea, a bit of a sunny afternoon there, partly cloudy for Fingal and 19 degrees. Showers statewide on Friday, not much reaching the east though, snow in the west lowering to 400 metres. Showers for the west, far south and Bastrade Islands on grand final day, fine elsewhere after a morning frost. Fine on Sunday apart from a shower over the west, far south and possibly King Island. Mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow, a cool cloudy day in Adelaide, a sunny 23 for Melbourne, fine for Canberra and Sydney, but a shower or storm possible for Brisbane. And currently in Hobart it's 10 degrees, Launceston 9 right now and Devonport 9 and Joe, we'll give it all the all clear. Alright, thank you very much for that Murph. That's all from the team for now, have a great evening, we'll see you a bit later, bye bye.